like when I met, I, I don't know, like, um, it was an electric connection. I had communicated with this person since 2019, I believe. And um, on and off, three years. And we finally decided to meet. And we met at a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> that was um, the middle spot for both of us. And... Um, you know, I pulled up. My car is super tinted. His car is not tinted, which was to my advantage. I could see him. He could not see me. And then I'm, like, having a little panic attack in the car because that's, you know, that's what I always do. And, um, yeah, like, I'm shuffling through my car, shuffling through my purse, checking my face in the mirror, checking my lipstick, checking my lip gloss, uh, brushing my eyelashes, brushing my eyebrows, fixing my hair, adjusting myself, adjusting my bra, adjusting my boobs, and um, I get out of the car. I have a low car. He has a high car, and he looks over at me, and uh, we look at each other, and you know, just as a woman, for me, I can't speak for all women, right, but for me, um, I'm often seeking validation, right? I want to know, am I pretty enough? Am I smart enough? Am I this enough? Am I that enough? And you know what? Now that I think it through, it's not because I'm a woman. It's my upbringing. It's my life experiences, my insecurity, my low self-esteem, my, the parenting that I experienced. Uh, the childhood that I had, the friends that I had, and my trauma, most importantly. But I'm often seeking validation, and, um, you know, I'm looking to see facial reactions, body language. Like, does this man like me? Does he think I'm pretty? Like, I haven't met you. You've seen me in photos. And, um, I mean, people are always pleasantly surprised when they meet me in person. But, um yeah, you know, we sat in the car, we talked and talked and talked, and um, I still was seeking that validation, because usually it's like, oh, you're so this, or you're so that, or I love your this, not usually, like, to seem like I'm bragging, but you know what I mean, like, you hear something sooner than, sooner than not, and um, I remember, I didn't get that, and I'm like, what the flip-flop, so, um, I remember thinking, like, does this dude think I'm cute? Does he think I'm ugly? Does he think I'm this? Does he think I'm that? And then he's placing his hand on my knee, which some may argue that's quite risky, right? That's, like, a bit much. Um, testing waters. And maybe it was testing waters. Like, who knows? Like, at this point, I'll never know. But, um... Yeah, he placed his hand on my knee. There's my knee. It looks really flat right now. And um, then I'm like, okay, physical contact is often a sign of attraction uh, in the slightest ways, right? There are subtle ways that people, they want to touch you. If they want to touch you, they find you attractive, whether it's romantic dynamic or not. Like that's scientifically been proven, like behavioral and body language studies. I'm not the expert, but I, I've read a lot. Um, so I'm like, okay. The reason we finally decided to meet was um, we were playing Truth or Dare, and we had been playing for, honestly, days at this point, like, throughout the day. Uh, we would dare ourselves things or tell ourselves different truths about each other, and I genuinely felt like I was super-duper connecting to this person. Um, and one of the dares was, I dare you to meet me and give me a kiss. And I'm, I'm usually not, I mean, I can be a spontaneous person, but I'm usually not spontaneous with people I meet for the first time. Like I have to know you and trust that you're not a murderer and then I'll be spontaneous with you or trust that I like you and then I'll be spontaneous with this time. I'm like, you know what? Just do it. So that's why I decided to meet with him. And, um, I was wearing like some weird lip gloss, you know me, well, you don't know me, but you will. Um, and it's like, I like matte, matte 
textured lip glosses and um but I feel like some of them dry my lips out and I'm like oh my god no like I'm here to kiss this man and I have crusty lips no um and um he said something about the dare and I'm like oh my god then I, I get so awkward and weird I'm like no 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 I'm like no don't kiss me yet and then I felt bad because I've rejected men in the past like that and I know men take it super harshly, especially if it's the first interaction, you reject them. Like sometimes for some of them, it's like a full turn on, off, not on. And um, they won't never try again. Like you can crush a man's ego. I mean, you can crush a woman's ego from rejecting her, depending on the situation, right? And depending on how fragile that ego was to begin with. But I mean, I'm like, no, 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 not yet, not yet, whatever. And um, he goes in and he kisses me and it was electric. If you've experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. And I've only had, oh my God, like three kisses. I have had, like, I've kissed like three people like that. But this one was definitely like my top two. It was electric. It was like a shock of electricity and energy. It was, it was an amazing kiss. We're making out. It's hot. It's heavy. We're in that walmart parking lot that's empty because it's christmas eve is it christmas eve or christmas day i think it might have been christmas day it might have been christmas day i think it was the 25th of december of 2022 um so yeah it's been like a month right but <sighs> i don't even know why i'm rehashing this moment in my life but um made out, made out some more, made out some more, talked, made out some more, and he just stared in my eyes like, I don't know what, like, like a Furby, you know, Furbies have those really big ass eyes, and I think some Furbies have like blue eyes, blue greenish eyes, because his eyes, they're like blue, and I'm just like, losing my mind over here like who is this Furby staring back at me holding my face making out with me and staring at me with these big ass Furby eyes and it just felt like a fucking movie and I love those moments um and I think that in my connections with people and in dating like that's what I'm missing I'm missing those moments that feel like you're in a fucking movie. Like those crazy ass moments that just like throw your world upside down. Like, yes, I have a life and I have a career and I have stuff going for myself and I have to like stay within certain confines and still be appropriate, be a decent human, not break the law. I get that. But I am missing the fire the passion and the excitement that I have had from only one other connection in my life. Like that is the type of connection that I want to come back into my life. Like I, I obviously I've had other connections, but there's something about the fiery ones that just, they drive me freaking crazy. And I'm not even talking sexual. Like, yes, the sex is amazing too, but I don't know, they just awaken something inside of me. Like, I feel so alive. I feel exhilarated. I, and I guess it's oxytocin, right, that my body is releasing. Um, it, was, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was great. And then we decided we're parting ways. Like, it's late at this point. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to my car now, whatever. He's like, okay, I'll walk you to your car. And, of course, we're, like, making out by the car and stuff. Mind you, at a Walmart parking lot. And I'm just, like... I am not 15. Like, I can't be making out next to my car in a Walmart parking lot in the middle of the night. This is fucking embarrassing. I'm very, um, not very, but I can be very traditional and conservative when it comes to some things. I try to stay within confines of certain images, especially because of my work. I don't work in politics directly, but I have in the past. And I think because of that, it kind of shaped me into the type of person I am. And um in certain settings I try to stay within those confines so I'm like I can't be making out with you next time I car. um but yeah we made out and we hugged and like in the moments that we were by my car and he's just like staring at me like holding my face and like kissing me and now that I'm like replaying it it's giving love bombing <laughs> 
but I wasn't getting love bombing before. Like I wasn't getting love bombing via text. I, he wasn't calling me every day. He wasn't offering me the sun, the stars and the moon. We were just chill. We were connecting. We were talking. We were vibing, talking about our truths and stuff, uh, exchanging photos, not even sexual, just like random stuff. Like I dare you to send me a picture of you waking up with boogers in your nose or something stupid. You know what I mean? It just was so organic and natural. But when I was hugging him by my car, I'm just like in my mind, I'm just thinking like, I'm going to fall in love with you. Like, I can already see it. And granted, some may argue that I say that about everyone I meet. I've met a lot of men and people because I've dated women too. But I don't say that about everyone. I say that when I really see potential and I feel something. Like, I literally felt like I could already feel it. I could feel my future with him. I could feel and see the super fun times we were going to have together. Um, and, you know, we talked about, like, the next time we were going to see each other. And I asked him a question because I wanted to know more about his work. And he said, you know, well, I'm not going to tell you. He's like, let's save that for a conversation over dinner. And then, um, I don't know, things fizzled out. Which, I granted, it's been a month, right? It's been a month and a week. But I feel like things, I mean, I haven't seen him since I met him that one time and I've never seen him again. We've still communicated on and off. Um, he had, there was a passing in his family. And then I was trying to be respectful about that. But also, like, I still want attention from you. And, um, and he recently had surgery and I sent him a message the morning of his surgery just like wishing him you know a good surgery and that's that so what's the point of this the point is I don't know I don't know why I met him I don't know why we ever ended up meeting I wish I wouldn't have met him um I wish it didn't go as well as it did I wish I wouldn't still wonder why it never went anywhere and wonder what it would have been like had it taken off the ground um i'm not giving it which clearly i'm giving it energy right now by replaying us meeting but i'm not going to actively make efforts to pursue him or anyone for that matter it's just going to be a fun moment in time that happened. And that's that. I'll never know what, what that meant or what that was for. Um, and I know I probably sound like super dramatic, but it's like if I met you a month ago and I haven't seen you in a month, it's not, it's not taking off for me. One, that's not the type of energy I'm looking for. Like, I want you to be on me like white on rice, baby. It's like... But no, it's like people have to show you that they are interested. And I'm not saying white on rice interested, but honey, in 30 days, you didn't make an effort to see me. And it's not like we live miles apart. I know people that live over an hour away that'll still come to see me. It's just about what do you want, right? People will show you what you want, what they want. They'll show you how much you matter to them or how little you matter to them and when that happens you have to pay attention and you have to respect it and um don't stay longer where you're not meant to be there's this quote i saw on youtube the other day i can't remember the exact quote but um essentially it was that right step out of the room when you're not supposed to be there anymore so i'm removing myself i've removed myself and um, I know their surgery, I think it's a six week recovery. Then they have to do physical therapy and stuff. Um, that started last week. Who knows, maybe in six weeks I'll hear from them again. Or in six weeks we'll finally see each other again. And um, it'll be my love story or maybe it'll just be like a, a really good hookup story with a lot of fiery, passionate, sex <sighs> until then another failed 
I would call it failed. I know some would argue it's not failed, but I would say another failed connection. Failed connection. And um, I don't know, maybe it was me, right? And we always do this, but it's like I, because I'm such an overthinker and I'm an obsessive thinker, I always want to try to understand why something is or isn't and what a person was thinking when they made the decisions that they did and what it was attributed to. That's just that's just the way my mind has always operated. And as I've gotten older, it's just gotten even more obsessive. But who knows? Um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell me about your whirlwind romance, even if it only lasted a few hours, and what came of that, how you made peace with that, what you learned from it. Um, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to learn from others and their experiences. And if you made it this far, thank you for listening to my random story about the guy that I fell for that I'll probably never see again in my life. Thanks.